Well, let me tell you folks, I love these sort of days. Those people that will know me will know that I don't like throwing my money around. So this sort of fishing suits me down to the ground. It's free fishing. We're in the middle of Stamford Town Centre. We're on the River Welland. And this place, in the winter months, becomes a bit of a mecca for a lot of silver fish. There's some perch as well. There's been pike striking. You know, it's really, really ran with fish at the minute. And we've come today with a view of spending as little as possible on tickets, bait, everything. We're keeping everything nice and simple. So I've already been fishing for a little bit. I know there's some fish feeding. You know, we're getting a bite of chalk. It's not easy, easy fishing. We're having to work for it a little bit. So those guys that think I just go and sit on solid venues constantly and catch loads of fish, you know, today's a little bit different. We're having to think about it a bit. And what I want to do is just run through how you go about targeting these like town centre waterways in the middle of winter because there's loads of good fishing to be had. So first of all, I've had a bit of a plumb around. You don't need anything really that, diff that complicated for this sort of place. I've had a plumb around. It's about six foot deep out there, but there's a lot of weed on the bottom. And as I've been fishing, we've been catching that weed. So I've ended up shallowing up quite a bit. And we're an hour into the session now and I've, I've ended up fishing probably about 10 or 12 inches off the bottom. That's great when there's loads of fish around and with the baits that we're fishing, you can get away with doing that because I'm fishing bread punch. You can quite often hang a bit of bread a little bit further off the bottom than you can other baits and they'll still take it. It swells up beautifully, they'll, they'll take it. So I'm using a 0.8 float. There's a tiny bit of pull on, pull on the water and this 0.8 is just holding there. Actually, I'll come around on this camera so you can see the float a bit better. This 0.8, just gives me something to hold back against. It's a round body float. And when there is a little bit of flow on the water, I do like a round body float, because it just gives me the option of uh, holding back and laying a bit of line on the bottom if I need to. Down the business end, we've got our Olivet, and then we've got number 10 dropper shots. We've got three number 10 dropper shots. Like I say, the fishing hasn't been hectic, so we're not bombing the bait down to the fish. We're trying to give a little bit of a slower fall down to the fish and hopefully the odd fish is taking it on the drop. And then we've got our six inch hook length. That's 08 and the hook is a size 18. So it's not a really, really aggressive rig. We're sort of holding onto the float, letting, the, letting each dropper shot fall through the water. And that is, you know, that's when we're getting a bite a lot of the time. Elastic wise, we've got our high vis. That's three to four, beautiful elastic for this time of year. Again, coping with fish from ounce roach up to like sort of like six, eight ounces that we're, we're catching sometimes. Now, feeding wise, it's just about time for another bit of feed. So it's worth talking about it while, we, while we're doing it. Put that down there. I've got, underneath here, my bread feed. Liquidised bread, I've just put a, a, loaf of liquid, a loaf of bread through the blender. I've took the crusts out, cut the crusts off, put the rest of the bread through the blender, the liquidizer, and I've got a really fine feed. Now, if I was to cut that in on its own, it would just float off downstream. So what I want to do is add some gravel to it. You're not adding any food content, you're not adding any food content to the mix by adding some gravel. But all it's doing is it's making sure that bread bombs to the bottom. Obviously, that's where you want to be fishing. So you want to make sure you're in control of the swim. You don't need loads of gravel. I'm just going to put a little bit in, in this bread just to make sure it's all going to sink. You know, you can't really add too much because, like I say, you're not adding any, adding any feed to the, to the bread mix. This is a very fine gravel. And to be honest, if you can find the finest gravel possible, that is going to be a winner because it helps break up the bread once it's down on the bottom as well. Obviously, of course, the gravel, it, it sort of, it works, but I do like this fine gravel because it, it may, means that the bread breaks up a lot faster once it gets down to the bottom. And that's what I want to do. I want to open that feed up as fast as possible. So to start with, I've put in a really big ball of bread, but as the session has gone on, it's it's been obvious that we've needed to top up with slightly smaller balls, a little bit more regular. So this is probably our third top up now. 
We're just putting in a ball, I don't know what size that is, it's smaller than a golf ball but bigger than a conker. We're going to squeeze it quite hard, it's got all that gravel in so it's going to bomb to the bottom. And bread is obviously a really instant bait, so quite often after a refeed, we're getting a good response. So I'm just going to cut that in. Sinks like a stone, because obviously it's got all that weight inside. And then I think we can go almost straight over the top of that and see if we can catch a fish. Now, you can see we've had a good day. We've got loads of holes in the old bread. It's time for a change. I can feel that. It's starting to dry out already. Changing your bread hook, hook um, your hooker slice, again, it's something really important when you're bread fishing. So it might seem a bit of an overkill to bring a full loaf with you on the morning of a session, but what I don't use will go in the liquidizer for my next session. And also it just means that if my bread just start to dry out or it could be the other way, it could be, we could have a bit of drizzle and the bread could get a little bit damp. It just means that we've got the option of changing our hooker slice as regularly as possible. So through trial and error, decided on a five mil punch being the, being the right size. So that's what we're gonna go, go out with. I mean, some days it's bigger, some days it's smaller, but I actually started on a four mil today. So you can see there, that's a four mil. Five mil slightly bigger. And believe me, just that millimeter of difference does make a difference. So we'll put our five mil punch on. I don't like to do anything to my bread, as in microwave it or anything like that. I want the bread to fluff up as fast as possible. That's why I just buy a, a, a loaf on the, on the morning of a session and then just do literally nothing to it because then it's going to swell up as, as fast as possible. So as soon as that bread enters the water, it's swelling up. Now to keep a few fish there, you can see I'm just rattling in a little bit of hemp over the top. I think that, that helps keep a few fish in the area, a bit of sound on the water. There we go, little fish, a bit of sand on the water, always keeps fish in the area, it doesn't matter what it is, whether you're fishing for F1s or, or roach, there you go, little, little roach, probably one of the, the smaller fish that we've had today. I mean, you've got to take into account, it's absolutely freezing. If we were to fish a lake today, we'd be breaking the ice, that's how cold it is. You know, all the still waters that I know of, have got a lid on at the minute so just to get out and, and get a few bites is a bonus and for me it is all about getting bites i don't really want to just sit there and sit for one or two one or two decent fish i would like to actually work at a swim and, and get a few bites as i'm doing it so each drop in we're just putting a little bit of hemp in I'm trying to lay the rig out reasonably straight and then hold on to it. So I'm not letting it go downstream. I'm trying to hold on to it. It's a great tactic when there's another fish. When it's not a, a solid peg, it's a great tactic of just slowing that fall down of the bait. You're still in control of it. There we go, that's beautiful dumpy roach. They've all got this sort of like this, this, this black spot on them. Maybe you can see that just on his, got his, on his lip and on his back there. When I used to spend a lot of time fishing the, the River Neen, nearly every single roach that you caught seemed to have a, a, a black spot on them. So I think it's some sort of parasite or something like that. I'm not too sure, but they all seem to have that, that condition. Well, you can see it's really simple fishing. Cheap as chips, loaf of bread. Okay, I'm using, using tinned hemp, but you could probably boil your own hemp up or a lot of the time it's not really necessary, but 
loaf of bread for feed, loaf of bread for, for hooking, and you're away. God, beautiful fishing, obviously the top up as well, knowing when to top up is, is crucial. So we probably had, I don't know, 20 minutes fishing out of each top up. I'm gonna net this one. Seems a, seems a slightly better fish. Didn't wanna, didn't wanna risk bumping a fish off on camera. Look at that, cracking roach. Beautiful fish. And a lot of these venues, I suppose you drive over them every day and you don't really think about getting your gear out. Probably end up fishing more well-established venues, but all the fish head into these town centres during the winter, whether it's just for a bit of warmth or there's less predation. Obviously, I guess cormorants and otters would wouldn't feel happy coming down in amongst these houses. They'd rather spend their time out in the countryside where they're not gonna be around people. And bread is so often the best bait because we know roach love it anyway, but I guess with the amount of people that come down here feeding the ducks maybe, the roach probably see bread as a as a natural food. Let's see if we can get another one for you. Occasionally, when it just gets to, to sit there, I'll probably give it maybe 30 seconds just hanging there. Remember, we're fishing quite a way off the bottom because of that weed on the bottom. So I'll just let it hang there for maybe 30 seconds just as it goes through the swim. And then we'll lift it out and let it in again. A lot of bites have just been just as the bait settled, so. We don't want to hang it there for too long if we're not getting, not getting a bite. You know, on another day we'd probably, here we go. On another day we'd probably set up a lighter rig and let the bait fall through, through the water a bit more, but this bulk rig seems to be working really well. So, bread's so good, you just very rarely miss a bite, especially if you're using the, the right size hook. You could often get away with a slightly bigger hook with bread than on other baits, because it swells up, it becomes really soft and sort of covers a bigger hook. I think a big hook's good as well, it just helps the bread to sink, sink a, through the water a little bit better. Obviously with a really light hook and really light bread, you can just hang a little bit too high in the water, probably above your, your dropper shot if you're not careful, but a heavier hook just keeps the bread pinned down a bit better. We've not had any pike problems, but that's quite often an issue when there's loads of roach. First bite we've missed. We've seen the odd pike striking further downstream, so it wouldn't surprise me if he worked his way up to us at some point. Quite often the only issue with this sort of place is the parking and we've, we've managed to park right behind where we're fishing but the traffic wardens not give us, give us all day. You get two or three hours fishing, that's when the, that's after the traffic warden sees you here so hopefully you get here early, get your fishing in, traffic warden pops by and you can get a bit, bit of extra fishing in. There we go. Beautiful fishing. I'm going to net this guy again. 
So there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed a few tips on getting out and catching a few fish. Even better when it costs virtually nothing. Until next time guys, tight lines.